Welcome to part two of how to grow mushrooms using the PF tech. Now in part one, we created a substrate and injected it with a liquid culture of a mushroom mycelium. And then we just kind of waited for the, uh, the cakes to colonize. And as you can see, um, some of the cakes are fully colonized now. So you can see all this beautiful white mycelium completely covering the cake. And it took about two weeks for this to be completely consolidated. And as you can see, the mycelium is starting to pull away a little bit from the inside of the jar. So now we know that they're ready to be birthed. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna be taking the cakes out of the jar. We're gonna be rehydrating them so they soak up a lot more moisture and then covering them in a layer of vermiculite um, before putting them in the shotgun fruiting chamber and allowing them to fruit. Now over the past couple weeks, we've really done nothing but just sat and wait. These jars have uh, been inside of a, a dark tote, just kind of colonizing away. And we did a couple different species. First off is the elm oyster, which is absolutely fully colonized. We also did a black pearl oyster, which is also fully colonized. That's the one I'm holding here. Um, and we also did a piopino or an agrosibi argerita. That one is about 80% colonized, so it's not quite done. Uh, uh, but I wanted to jump into it and at least birth the oyster cakes and show you how to grow these oyster mushrooms using the PF tech. So we're gonna hop into the kitchen now. I'm gonna show you how to birth these properly and then we're gonna uh, eventually grow some mushrooms. So one of the common questions with the PF tech is how do you know it's ready? How do you know it's fully colonized? and ready to be birthed and eventually fruited? And it's pretty simple. Um, pretty much basically as soon as you can no longer see blank substrate, as soon as you can see that the mycelium has completely overtaken the cake, then you basically know that it's fully colonized and it's ready to go. Now, a better practice is once it looks like it's fully colonized to still wait a few days, just so you can ensure that the mycelium can become kind of fully consolidated and finish um, expanding throughout maybe the center of the jar if you can't quite you know, if you can see it on the outside, it might be some of the, the inside of the block that is still left uncolonized. But uh, basically, as, as, as long as you can no longer see um, uncolonized substrate, then the cakes are colonized and they're ready to go. So all I'm gonna do in this part of the process is fill up a bowl with cold water, and then I'm gonna take these cakes out, kind of smack the bottom a little bit, shake off some of the vermiculite that was on top, and then put them in a bowl and kind of leave them overnight. What that's gonna do is rehydrate the blocks because mushrooms, no matter what species of mushroom you're growing, are mostly water. So the more we rehydrate these cakes, um, the better chance we're gonna have of getting nice, beautiful flushes of mushrooms. Now again, with the, the PF Tech, it's not really optimized for getting big flushes or getting a, a huge amount of mushrooms. It's more just kind of a fun project. Um, but still, if you hydrate them, you're gonna get a much better crop of mushrooms. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, make sure our hands are super clean. Um, again, these are already colonized, so they're pretty resistant to contamination, uh, but you still wanna be kind of as sterile as possible. So we're gonna wash our hands, fill up this bowl, and then uh, we're gonna fruit these, birth these cakes, I guess, and, and put them in there, and then wait until tomorrow where we can roll them in vermiculite and get them into the fruiting chamber. Now we can tell that these cakes aren't contaminated just because of the way they look. If they were contaminated with mold or something, you would usually see it as like a green mold. Sometimes you get a lipstick mold, which is red, but this is just nothing but white fluffy mycelium. Um, of course, if you, if you take it out and it smells rancid or something, that's not normal either. So, um, you know, make sure that it, it smells okay and it looks okay and it's, it's ready to be birthed. And if you're having trouble getting them out of the jar, I like to use kind of these wide mouth mason jars because it makes it a lot easier to actually get this out. But if you're having trouble to get it out, it's not coming out easily, you can just take a knife and kind of easily cut around the outside, which kind of loosens up some of that mycelium, which might be stuck to the jar, and then it comes out a lot easier.
these cakes will float and it's best if they're fully submerged so they can hydrate better. So it's good if you have a plate or something you can put on top to kind of hold them under the water. I actually don't have a plate that'll fit this bowl, but I do have a frying pan uh, that works pretty well. So it's just gonna sit on top and kind of hold those cakes underwater so they'll be fully hydrated in the morning. Okay, so it's now the next day. These cakes are fully hydrated and they're ready to be put into the fruiting chamber. But first, what we're gonna do is roll them in a layer of vermiculite. And the reason we're gonna do that is because vermiculite is really helpful in retaining the moisture. So it kind of acts like a mini casing layer on top of these cakes and will help retain the moisture inside of this cake and will just help the mushrooms better, able, better be able to form pins and eventually fruit. So yeah, all we're gonna do is take the cake and roll it in vermiculite. And some people bake this vermiculite. They'll put it in the oven and bake it for an hour or so to kill off any contaminants. But really that's pretty unnecessary because the cakes are fully colonized. Um, when they're out in the open air, they're exposed to just normal contaminants in the air anyway. So I think baking the vermiculite is definitely overkill. Um, because vermiculite in itself is just a dry mineral and there's nothing in it that's going to get contaminated. So there it is. Here's the cakes and we're just going to roll all of these ones and then put them in the fruiting chamber. And if you want, you can go ahead and scrape some of that older mycelium off with a fork. And what that's going to do is just going to kind of help invigorate the underlying mycelium and likely produce better pins more even pin sets, and just kind of encourage that mycelium to form pins where it's been scraped. Okay, so that's it. Now we have these six brown rice flour PF Tech cakes, and we're gonna go ahead and put them in the fruiting chamber and then just kind of keep them humid and hopefully very soon we'll start to see some mushrooms form. Now we're going to put them in the fruiting chamber sitting on top of a little piece of tin foil and that's just going to prevent kind of perlite from sticking to the cakes and also if mushrooms form on the bottom of the cake which is very likely because on the bottom of the cake you know there's a really nice layer of humidity between say the tin foil we set it on and the bottom of the cake so if pins form there we want them to form on the tin foil and not like against the perlite because then it just kind of makes a mess of your mushroom so yeah we're gonna go ahead and put these in the shotgun fruiting chamber i'm expecting to see pins in a couple of days and after that uh, just like it was with the mushroom growing kit the mushrooms will start to grow really quickly so within a week or so maybe up to two weeks we should have a little flush of oyster mushrooms so here's where we're gonna fruit our mushrooms. This is a shotgun fruiting chamber. I won't go too deep into how to make this just cause I um, did it in a couple other videos which you can go check out. But basically it's just a clear tote with a bunch of holes in it. And then the inside has been filled with the bottom uh, with a moist layer of perlite, which will help keep the mushrooms humid, but also give them a fresh air intake through these holes. So we're gonna put down these little pieces of tin foil. And then we're gonna go set down our cakes. And of course we have our spray bottle, which we can go ahead and spray down the inside walls of the tote. And then multiple times a day, we'll come by, spray it with this bottle, and then fan it down with the lid, just to give it lots of fresh air and try to keep it humid at the same time. Okay, so it's been about four or five days now since I put these cakes into the shotgun fruiting chamber and they are definitely starting to pin. A number of the cakes have little tiny clusters of oyster mushrooms absolutely all over the cakes, which is really, really cool. And the only thing I've really been doing, um, and 
If you've seen some of the other videos where I use a shotgun fruiting chamber, this might actually seem a little bit repetitive, but all I've been doing is maybe four or five times a day, go by, spray down the inside of the shotgun fruiting chamber really well with a spray bottle, and then fan it with the lid just to bring more fresh air into the fruiting chamber and maintain that humidity because of course oyster mushrooms in particular uh, like a lot of fresh air, but all mushrooms like humidity. So if you can keep those levels of humidity up and the levels of fresh air up, then we're gonna have a really good chance at growing some nice mushrooms instead of that fruiting chamber. I've also got a reptifogger. Now this is something that's totally optional, but if you want a more automated way to get fresh air and humidity into a shotgun fruiting chamber, a reptifogger is a pretty cool way to do it. And I can show you quickly how that works. So this is the reptifogger. And again, if you've seen previous videos, this might seem a little bit repetitive, but um, Again, this is just a really nice way that you can get fresh air and humidity inside of your shotgun fruiting chamber in an automated way. So this is typically, uh, you can find these at pet stores. It's typically used for like reptiles to keep their terrariums nice and humid. So basically I'll just go ahead and crack the lid on the fruiting chamber and then take this hose and just kind of shove it in there near the bottom. You don't want it spraying kind of directly on the cakes. Um, but you can just kind of put it into your fruiting chamber like that and turn it on. And I have this on a timer, so it runs uh, every hour for about 10 minutes. And if we look at this, you can see that once it gets going here, it basically just blows in fresh air and humidity. So it's gonna keep the inside of that fruiting chamber at just the right conditions to help our cakes grow. Okay, so it's been almost exactly a week now since I put these cakes inside of the shotgun fruiting chamber. And three of the cakes are actually doing really well. One of the types of oysters is growing quite nicely. It pinned all over the cake. And even though the actual mushroom fruiting bodies don't look that great, um, it did reasonably well for what this technique can do. And this just kind of highlights something about the, the PF Tech. It's a fun project. And you know, it's an interesting thing to do to grow mushrooms, but it's definitely not the best way to grow mushrooms. If we were to grow these oyster mushrooms on a regular fruiting block or outside or under some other kind of conditions or different substrate, the results would be way different. We would get a bigger bounty. We'd get a lot more of you know the edible caps or the edible fruits of the mushrooms. But again, it's still just a really fun project. And the best part about the PF Tech is it requires very little specialized equipment. Uh, it's very inexpensive to get into and it just is kind of a fun way to learn the mushroom growing cycle, the mushroom life cycle, and just give you a general idea of how mushrooms are cultivated. So even though only three of the cakes have fruited so far, um, three other ones are starting to see little knots uh, where the mushrooms are going to pin and then the piopinos or the Grassi argerita have just finished colonizing and I'm going to fruit those later. So now we're going to harvest these mushrooms, harvest the small bounty that we did get off of these PF cakes. And once they've been harvested, once you've pulled off all the mushrooms and even the dead pins, you can take those cakes, put them right back into a bowl of water, rehydrate them, and then throw them right back into the fruiting chamber where you'll get a second flush and sometimes even a third flush or a third crop of mushrooms. So you can get more mushrooms off of this than just the fir first flush by simply rehydrating them and repeating the process uh, once or twice again. So yeah, I think that's it for this video. I think I'm going to wrap it up. Keep your eyes peeled for another video uh, where we're going to try and grow the Agrasibi Argerita or the Piopino mushrooms and see how those turn out. But uh, I think that's it for this video. So if you have any questions about the PF Tech or about growing oyster mushrooms in general, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments below and uh, keep your eyes peeled for that next video. So thanks so much for watching. I'm Tony from Fresh Cap Mushrooms and we'll see you in the next one.